Okay. All right. Um, I am going to do a side a side class for you guys um, or a side instruction. This is gonna go um, as part of our quantum fitness look good naked series, but it also fits perfectly in to relationship dynamics, struggling relationships, having a hard time manifesting your partner, um, have a hard time manifesting money. If you If there feels like some sort of disconnect between where you are and where you want to be, then even though this is for our quantum fitness class, this is going to be for you. Okay, so I'm Jessica Alstrom, and I'm the creator of Quantum Fitness and Quantum Method, as well as the Quantum Metamorphosis Academy. And, and basically what I do is I show people how to alchemize their pain and turn it into purpose, basically, or how to get from where you are to where you want to be. That is where I shine. So manifestation, mind coaching, all of it. And I utilize different tools from all different types of dynamics, such as science, metaphysics, um, you know, kind of like new age stuff, even, even the idea of biblical uh, work. We put it all together and we basically uncode it for the human journey. We're all in this evolutionary process and we're waking up and we're waking up and we're waking up. But it's supposed to be fun. We're supposed to be creating heaven on earth here. We're supposed to be manifesting our dreams. We're supposed to be having, not knowing. Like most of us know, oh, I create my reality or I know a lot more than most people. But do you have, are you embodying that which you know? Are you living that which you desire? So that's really where I kind of come in. And I focus on the how and the when. Everybody else wants to teach, you know, this is what it is, but I'm that curious child, like, okay, how, how does it work? So I want, today I want to break down one of the fundamental uh, blocks in all of those things I said, finding your special person, working on your self-concept, manifesting abundance and freedom, um, feeling certain hurt, feeling safe, all those things, it comes down to, to basically who you are as a biochemical being. And if you're going to start running out there affirming or, or using energy medicine to navigate your reality, you might want to know like what you're working with here. And biochemistry is, is my ultimate favorite. And neurology happens to be the the place where for some reason I just know things. So what I wanted to do is uh, break things down for you to understand in, in kind of cause and effect and where you are blocked versus where you're not blocked and why are you not blocked over here and why are you blocked over there? And if, if instead of rushing forward and trying to figure out how to get what you want, if you would slow down a bit and really take stock about like, okay, what am I working with here? Because the thing is, is we're all focused on the subconscious and the subconscious programs that are, are, your dominant assumption, like what you believe underneath your beliefs, like you're navigating with your conscious mind, like I don't believe that about myself. And you, you actually do in the subconscious. But where does that come from? Right? Like, we don't start off that way. We don't start off not being able to find love right away. It's like, all we are is love. So when does this happen? How does it happen? Most teachers will tell you that within this, the first seven years, because the brain remains in a theta based space, which is kind of like um, that dreamy imaginary consciousness type of place where you're not necessarily like in defense or reaction you're more in kind of like downloading or and and designing you know it, without a lot of judgment there and so because your brain is in that that altered space there's a lot that is happening within your body that you're taking on that you're not even aware of you're witnessing a lot of things that you don't even know that you're witnessing and taking that as a belief of your own and so usually by the time you're seven, your subconscious is fully formed and it is like, this is who you are. Okay. Unfortunately, you weren't present for most of it. So it's like, you know, you're sleeping in class and someone signed you up for something and you're like, what happened? And that's the seven year mark. And that, that's when you have to start dealing with all of these subconscious programs playing out. Now, what we do as humans, and this is indoctrinated and taught to us very early is what I do with my subconscious programs is I tr I try to pretend they're not true or I try to fix them so they're not true on the surface or I try to be someone else that doesn't feel like what that feels like underneath. And, and what we do is we build a lot of 
walls and masks between our subconscious beliefs about ourselves that were downloaded by basically just recording of what we demonstrated, what we saw, what was practiced, what we witnessed. And then, you know, the, the personality identification of, I don't want to believe that. So I'm going to go be the smartest person because I felt stupid. I'm going to go be the prettiest person because I felt ugly. I'm going to go hide because, you know, I was hurt. So there is a, a motivating factor that happens once the subconscious mind starts to solidify and run these programs because the programs are in your body. You have 75 trillion cells. Look at each one of them as a recorded CD or DVD. All right. And they are telling the story, not of who you want to be, but who you are based on the subconscious download of you. It's a snapshot, okay, of how mom and dad were together, how you were with dad, how you were with mom, how you were with the siblings, and how that dynamic moved around. What was your concept of money? How was money treated in your family? What were you allowed to do with money? What were you allowed to have with money? Were you someone's favorite? These are all very significant, like, backstories to the backstories, because once a character is built in a movie, there's a backstory and a backstory and a backstory how they got that way. And you're better off right now pulling yourself out of 3D and going down and finding who and what the world told you to be before you had a choice than trying to change anything in the material world. Because the, the material world is a photo copy, a reflection of you. So you are the player. And you are going to print out the playmates. So they're going to be a reflection of your subconscious dominant thinking and also your programming and also your hopes and desires and also the things you're hiding and also the things you're wanting. Okay. And then from there, you're going to print, you're going to basically print out of you the playground. So where you live, what you have access to, what you're allowed to do, your props, your, your, your things. Okay. So all of that is you pushed out. All right. And so when one of the fundamental building blocks of a human is this grand like design of this supercomputer. It is based in the, this, the, the laws of the universe. And it is also based in the laws of the occult. All right. And so if you actually look at the laws of the occult, the third law of the occult is the law of gender. All right. It's a complicated issue on the planet right now but if you go back to nature remember my definition of sin is separated from nature if you go back to nature i don't mean what kind of body you're sitting in you could be a man and you could feel in nature that you are divine feminine that's fine i'm saying what you feel in the heart of hearts of who and what you are is what you are not what you've been traumatized into believing but what you are at the center point of your being, okay? The body then will take the shape of either resistance or creation, but I'm going to show you something here. So when I created my biohacking program, that basically was how I took full control over the body and rewired everything so that it was doing what I told it to do, digesting what I was, how I was saying, right? Metabolizing how I was saying, and it was looking how I wanted it to look. One of the fundamental changes that I had to make there was in the idea that you are both masculine and feminine. You have a masculine side of your brain and you have a feminine part of your brain, whether you're male or female. Usually if you are femininely conscious, like that is your essence, you feel in nature, that's who you are, then your brain is going to be 60% that feminine and it's going to be 40% masculine and vice versa. All right. Well, when we are in childhood, a lot of the times, most of the time, we are, are looking through the reflection of who we might be based on what other people are. And we are looking at, especially in these last few generations, the gender, the gender shift has been major, like since like over the last hundred years. And although we're moving into more equality and things like that, when you interrupt the basic mechanisms of manifesting, right, you're going to, it's going to require a masculine and feminine to create the child, regardless of what your belief systems are. So what if you look at the idea of your manifestations being a child? And your masculine energy is going to play a part and your feminine energy is going to play a part. And if I was going to look at who that, that character representation would be is think of your, your masculine as the container. 
okay? And your, your feminine as the desire and the energy that moves and makes that container function, okay? So like once you've seen a, a dead body, if you ever have, like you can tell there's no energy there. There's no consciousness there. It's just now it's, it's kind of an empty shell. It's, it's a container. Now I'm not saying men are just containers, but in that idea of creating reality here and the way that your body, your hardware, not your software. Okay. Your software are like the beliefs that you are going to download from your environment, from your epigenetic environment, right? Like who you are in economics and all those things, but fundamentally, like in the womb, how you were grown, you have two hemispheres and they're for a very specific reason. So if I desire to be a feminine in this time and space, then I am going to be manifesting it, the polar opposite of how necessarily a man would be manifesting. And so when we have parents that are fearful or worried, or the mom is very dominant and the dad is very passive, or we have a custodial situation or a lack of emotional empathy, then what is happening is we're being asked to shift and mold and adapt to our family dynamic because that's what you do to survive when you are not the dominant creator of your reality yet, right? And you're, you're, you're requiring your parents to basically be paying God and say, when you say, can I have something? They're going to decide how you manifest. They're going to say yes or no, even if you were being good, all right? And you're not going to have power over that subconscious yet. So you're kind of having to go with the flow the first seven years. But what we forget is that we are witnessing what love means. We are witnessing, well, who am I in that love? What is dad if that's masculine? What is mom if that's feminine? Where does mom's role play? What is dad's role play? And this gets very confusing into a child. And so like, let's take my situation because I can't speak for you. But in my childhood, my mom was very much the alpha. Okay. She was the boss. All right. And everyone, including what, whoever she was married to at the time, was always more submissive. They were always more passive because it wasn't worth the argument. You know, nobody really stood up for themselves. Um, although the masculine in our dynamic was required to be the breadwinner. And she stayed at home and kind of made the rules. That's why I said man can be head of the house, but the woman is the neck kind of thing. And, and again, I had to find where my place in that story was. And so if it, if it was going to be good survival for me, then I had to turn my masculine way down and I had to really up my feminine energy because I wasn't really allowed to do much. So if you look at masculine, it's the doing. If you let, if you look at the feminine, it's the feeling space. It's the feeling space. It's the design. It's the visionary. It's the, it's the creative, it's the artistic. And then the masculine is very much what do I do? How do I do it? It's very logical. It's very linear. It's very architectural. It's very engineering. And that is how when both sides of those hemispheres come together, now you can see how you could build an entire reality because you have every single thing you need fundamentally. You have the imagineering and the, the, the desire and the vision. And then you also have the ability to take intuitive action to bring that together to make the child or the manifestation or the new template or the new reality, okay? And so what happens is in childhood, that natural nature of you, right? The nature of you, it gets bent out of shape because of the dynamic that you're forced into in your childhood, all right? And so if there's abuse there, or if you had to, like, as a little girl, you had to step up and, like, go work on a farm or, you know, you had to go work really early or raise your siblings, okay? Then naturally what's going to happen is your brain is going to shift a bit. And in nature, as soon as feminine energy begins to feel unprotected and unsafe, like her energy is not contained, she will shift into being dominantly masculine. OK, and her femininity will turn down because it's not safe for her to feel as much. And so she's going to have to go out and build and provide and protect and fix and save. She becomes the hero instead of the nurturer. All right. And then in the same premise opposition, 
the masculine energy that is emasculated by the father, you know, never can do enough right, or over nurtured by the mother, or there's so many dynamics, then what happens is the masculine turns the masculinity down, and, and the femininity up. And that will create a very passive, like non driven, um, or start something gets excited about something, but doesn't follow through um is is kind of like addicted to the energy of the feminine but not really providing anything for her there's no stability there's no safety and this is where our civilization begins to fall like just like this is exactly what happened with dozens of other civilizations as soon as the gender dynamic which is how nature manifests gets messed up okay and and then I'm leading with my masculine because that's the way my brain was adapted and molded into the best way for me to survive. Okay. And same with the masculine because there's already an alpha, right? Then the dynamic when we're, when we have fear-based parenting, then we have repressive based parenting or we have over nurturing or we have under nurturing. And that's going to help us either overdevelop or underdevelop us right? Because we're not even going to like know what the heck is going on here until, you know, we manifest some narcissist relationships, some bankruptcies, some failures, and then we're starting to go like, wait, there's a pattern here. And so whenever I'm taking someone back to their baseline, we go below the subconscious into the unconscious. And the unconscious is where all of this stuff was originally downloaded. So you started off as that perfect masculine feminine embodiment of the kingdom of heaven, which is you and the king and the queen, right? But then all of a sudden, because I was never allowed to do anything or go anywhere or really build anything or create anything, it was like I had to survive. Then I had to be more emotionally adapted and more intuitive in my reality. And so my masculine out of safety turned way down and my femininity turned way up. And then what happens is usually then you're like a walking beacon of light and that's, that really brings predators to you, okay? And and so that naturally made me then shift into looking feminine, but very, very masculine mindset. Like, okay, I've got to take care of us. I've got to build this. I've got to protect us. I've got to fix this. I've got to make all the money. I've got to do everything. And then I began to lead my life that way. And that was the way that I started having success, you know, but what would happen is because the other, there's another law of the cult, I think it's number seven, is a law of polarity, right? That obviously in order to make a union or a connection, it, there's going to, it's good. There's going to be an opposition there. So who am I really going to be attracted to? Am I going to be attracted to an alpha man that could, that could dominate me when I have had to step into that dominant role? Okay. Am I really going to be attracted to that even though they look masculine? Or am I actually going to be attracted to someone that I could control so that I can stay safe or someone that I can take care of because I'm getting value from that or someone that I can provide from because they need to be fixed. Okay. And that was fundamentally like most of my relationships until I was like, Oh, <laughs> whoopsie. <laughs> right. And, and I had to do a lot of work because this, this wasn't just like form it formed by the time I was seven. I played out several more seven years se like series with those belief systems unconsciously. See, subconsciously, if a therapist was going to ask me about my relationship history, I would say they don't do anything. They don't protect me. I don't feel seen and heard. I don't feel safe in their presence. They're always taking from me. And my therapist will be like, hmm, your father didn't love you. And But ultimately, it's actually a hardware issue. OK, and so this is going to help you guys stay out of your story about where your dad is or where your mom is. And all we actually have to do is correct the hardware. The software will change through your affirmations and your day to day living. But the hardware, if you continue to search for your special person and hope you hope you find them and hope they are coming back to you and hope they forgive you and and hope they don't do that again. You, you're you're not playing in your 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 perfect castle here and you really want to start off in the body that you came here with that you were like yes this is who I'm going to be and this is what I'm going to create and if your brain is off as far as creative and logic 
it is going to affect every single thing. It has affected my business. It's affected money. It's affected my parenting. It's affected my relationships. And it also affected how I treated my body because I was operating off of this system that was naturally imbalanced. And my definition of sin is separated in nature. So of course, all these things I'm looking at, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm having to apologize all the time. And I'm asking, I need apologies all the time. And I, honestly, it's just like, my system was not set up correctly. And so it was designed to fail because I was looking at parents that were walking failures, no hard feelings, mom and dad, and doing the best that they could as unhealed children walking around. And that's where I learned to adapt to the way that my mom was very strong. My dad was very passive. And so that was the shape basically, and again, it's not going to look like that in a microscope, but it will fight her differently. It will wider differently. It will desire differently. It will also magnetize differently. So divine feminine who is in her masculine is not a walking magnet. She has to chase because that's what the masculine does. See, the masculine is the quarter. He's going to be the hunter. He's going to find something that he wants. And then he's going to, he's going to pursue that. And most of my female clients are the pursuers. They want something, they go out and get it. They need something, they go make the money. All right. And we found a lot of value in ourselves doing this. We really have. And masculine, oh, what's the point? I can't really do what I want to do anyways. And so I'll just go work a job and I'll have my hobby and I'll put in a little bit, but I'm not going to be necessarily driven to build anything big because men are so emasculated on this planet that if, there, if men were really men, we wouldn't have the problems we're having. We wouldn't. We wouldn't men at all. Like, because men wouldn't stand for this because they're builders. So one of the ways that I, can, I teach my clients is to look at masculine and feminine energy as a blender. Okay. So the blender in, in this demonstration here, and I'm not going to turn it on because it would be loud. But this is the masculine. Okay. It is completely built to do something very specific, all right? And it's hardwired for smoothies like salsas, right? It can do a whole bunch of different things. It can create a whole bunch of different things. But what happens if this blender is unplugged, okay? Let's say that there is a short in this or that, you know, not even anything wrong in here, but just some sort of electrical issue where electricity cannot get into the blender even though all the buttons work all the hardware seems to be working fine like there's nothing wrong with it as is it's just there's no electricity to turn it on okay so masculine is the container and feminine energy is what is filled in okay it is also the energy so the energy that is coming in is the feminine. And this is why guys want to be filled up and turned on, right? And you're, they're very simple creatures. Please debate me. I mean, I'm saying when a man is in his masculine, true masculine, it is if he is allowed to do what he was built to do, that man is happy. He is confident. He is successful, Right. This is why you'll your nails talk. Oh, until uh, until a man truly finds his wife, his woman, he he won't be that truly successful because he won't be focused on building this. And okay, well, what else can we do? And what else can we do? So the feminine energy is that it's all nature, and she exists in her own form without the container, but is always searching for the container. Exactly like the blender is always searching for the energy to inspire it, turn it on, okay? But when a woman has been in her masculine for too long, okay, so she will be needless, which means she's built her own version of this, all right? Two out of three of my, two out of three of my boyfriends, well, three out of three moved into my house, okay? So what does that say? All right, I was needless. So I'm out here looking for my Prince Charming with container and energy. But the thing about that, ladies, I'm not saying that we don't need men at all. You'll get, you'll hear this. What, what happens there is that I don't want to be the container. I never did. 
I never wanted to be. But out of abuse of by the masculine about my own survival needs, being a single mother, you know, having that early abuse that no one's going to be controlling me and I'm going to be the authority. It was out of survival that I built my own container. But it was like this belief system inside of me just until I find my person and then we'll build together. Right. But the essence of divine masculine is I build. So if you were going to like look at what testosterone does, it's a building growth hormone. It builds, builds the body. And when you look at a growth hormone in a woman, estrogen, it grows. Everything grows. Okay. So masculine is I build. Feminine is I grow. All right. And together. Okay. That is the trinity because then the child is, it is done. All right. I am. And so now we're a complete package. So if I'm leading in my masculine and I am already the blender and the electricity and I, who am I going to manifest? I'm going to manifest someone who wants to, to, to wants, wants someone to already have the container. Okay. And they're, they're going to be looking for the energy. They're going to be looking for getting turned on and filled up, but they're not necessarily looking to be the container for someone. They're not looking for, to provide for someone. They are not looking for, to, to protect someone. Because they say, well, you already have the house. You already have the money. You already have the job. And so when they come in, and because the feminine energy does not want to be the blender, she's like, oh, good. Someone who finally loves me, who's kind and and sweet and loving and real good with intimacy because they're not leading with what they build. They're leading with, you know, being filled up. And so they're really good and they know all the tricks in that. Okay. And so this is where we call that double dick, right? So it's like nothing to offer, but oh my goodness, right? The sex is amazing. So that's difficult for an alpha female, all right? Because we associate that connection with, oh my gosh, if he would just step up and provide, or if he would just step up and like, see, see, she wants to grow this, but his innate desire is to build. So if you are with a man who does not want to build anything, because it's already here, then you're going to have to grow what you know, okay? And, and so you're going to become very soon, probably within three months, very dissatisfied in this relationship because secretly guys out there who are dating alpha females, what we are praying for at night is that you will take this blender and build a better, bigger one that we can have the essence of the build we want to build together we want to we want you to build it and we want to grow it we want you to build it and we want to grow it right and so this is what happens with the disappointment loop and this is why if you don't correct the brain hardware receptors how it's firing it this dating this looking for a special person will always leave you disappointed pointed in the wrong direction it will always leave you obsessed because here's the thing. When the woman starts to say, hey, I really want us to build this together. Like, I'm not even that happy with this. I just did this on my own. And he's like, but what's the point? You already have that. And I just want to be filled up and turned on. There becomes this, this like disrespect thing that happens on both sides because ultimately the, the man that has been emasculated does not know he's emasculated. In his eyes, he is the alpha. He's got the big dick energy, right? He may not be able to provide you with anything, but you already have it. So what's the point? He's not leading trying to actually take advantage of you. He's just leading from I can't build. And so then when you start to assume or say, hey, I really want you to step up here. It's going, you're going to get an attack because that passive man that doesn't want to be passive or that beat down emasculated little boy doesn't want you to know about the weakness that's in there. And that will turn on you very quick, ladies. And what you will get is you will either get a character, like you will be character attacked or you will be left. Okay. You will either start to get the emotional abuse to make you feel smaller so that what he's feeling, he won't have to deal with because if you're hurting, and he's hurting, right? At least he feels more empowered than you. 
And so what we do with women accidentally is we see potential in someone like, oh my gosh, they would be such a great blender. Okay. They're, they don't have a blender or they have a blender, but they don't want to share it because this is mine or they don't want to get any, they don't want to create a restaurant blender out of themselves when they see their potential and see women are looking at this going, this could be a restaurant blender, right? Because we grow and a man that's not that building anything is going to be very content to keep what he has been able to build. Do not take it. Do not touch it. Do not hurt it. And do not come over here. And if I do, this is his bed. And see what happens is that's not a female, a feminine's nature. So as soon as she gets in there, she's going to be unhappy because she's going to be like, now it's time to grow. Now it's time to build. And he's going to be like, but we have one, you know, either you have it or I have a small one. And see, this is where fundamentally the wounds start to kick in because women are so used to going out and getting it that they don't understand why men are not as driven in that way because our desire to grow is, is so intense and we're so emotionally connected to our feelings that we can't deny that growth hormone within us. But see, men, they can, they can deny their build and they can focus only on getting turned on and filled up. And that can take a lot of their time. And so they're fine in living in an apartment or with their mom or in a very small space and going to work for that job for years and, and not and not even getting into the childhood trauma or not even having you say the word passive. Okay, I've had some men freak out when I've been like, you're just being a little passive. Like, how dare you? I'm the alpha. Of what? The bedroom? We're, I was just patting you on the back so you would be more ema emasculate, like less emasculated. And it's it's sad, but it it's happened. And it's happened to almost every single one of my feminine clients that's in their masculine and not known about it. Because a woman's going to want to grow. But here's the thing, we're, here's the mistake we're making, ladies. And if you are in your masculine right now and you are dealing with this and that you love this man who is emasculated, you have the power with your empathy and your nurturing and your patience to re-inspire him and help him heal, not through childhood therapy, not through doing your self-help work that you do, but by being a true woman, which means that Feminine energy will have to step out of her masculinity, all right? And no, you're not going to feel safe with this person right away. So you're going to have to be your own safety, practicing getting back in your feminine. And then how what you would do to fix this emasculated blender that you have here is that you would not ask to be more, okay? You'd be fine with what he has, okay? You would be appreciative of what he has. You would glorify what he has you would put what he has created on a pedestal and not try to grow out of it because see that's our compliment to you guys is when we see what you have to work with and we want to grow it that's a compliment but you see you take that as oh what i have is not good enough right so we shouldn't be asking men to to grow more than they can build but see here's the thing is inspiration is what brings masculine energy to his God connection. And so if I can inspire masculine energy to know their greatness and to remember that they're builders and to shift that brain around, which is a, a very easy process, the way I teach you guys, then what happens is that natural desire to build, what will happen is it will be the masculine's idea. But see, she's got to move into her submissive role and let him lead what he has. Now, if he's living in your house, okay, then what you could do is help him make your house better, right? And allow, actually allow him in the space to claim certain areas so that he may build and put roots down because men are all about roots and they're all about legacies and they're all about generational. Like, what am I going to leave behind? What am I going to leave behind? Unless they're very emasculated and they're just like, how many seeds can I sow? Right. How many seeds can I plant? Cause it's a way of leaving themselves behind. And so, well, if I can't build my home and my compound and my family, I'll build lots of baby mamas. Right. Or I'll build a lot of chaos or I'll build companies and destroy them or whatever. So you've got to kind of figure out where you are in this, but, Ladies, you're, you're most of my followers here. So you're going to be the one that's in here and you might actually own this. And the more you give away your ability to let him fill you up and turn you 
on without adding to the growth and to the build, you're just going to be resentful and you're going to be angry or you're going to get obsessed with fixing him. You're either going to look at him like he's the problem or you're going to be obsessed, obsessed with fixing him. And so you're going to flip into your mother role and that's not attractive. Or you're going to go life coach him and he's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until the start of his blades start to break down. And now he's got illnesses and knee issues and back issues. And now even the electricity that's going in, even though he needs it a lot, a lot, a lot, it's not working, you see. So you've got to see yourself at these fundamental places. Now, if you're a guy watching this and you're going, my wife is, she, I have to be too dominant and she's too passive. Or whatever, because again, when you look at the godliest relationships, the divine masculine is leading. And I'm going to tell you guys something and women, you can debate this. If you're a mere masculine, you'll be like, no, but if you're wanting to be in your feminine, you're going to uh, agree with this guys. We want to be owned and we want to be dominated and led in love, not as slaves, not as your own personal porn star, but protected so that we can be free with the energy. So if we know that our energy is contained safely and supported, we're going to make the best blenders in the world, okay? We are going to be like turn, turned on 24 hours a day. We're going to be in that submissive role because we know that we're being led and you're building, which means that we're going to grow. So if ladies are withholding from you from the turn on or the poured in part, you have to look at what she is actually trying to communicate to you based on what she doesn't believe you're giving, no matter how much you're trying, because try means trauma. Okay. And this is just, you guys, this is just biochemistry. This isn't pointing fingers. We all got messed up in childhood some way. Right. And you just got to say like, am I the, the blender who has completely forgotten the blender? And now I'm just the electricity. And now I'm that feminine man who is connecting with lots of women, but it's more through a sexual experience, right? Or am I the, the alpha female that's got play toys because she can't have a relationship? You're gonna have to take stock on the fundamental story that you started off with that you might still be role-playing in because the player creates the playmates and you will always create in polarity that what you are. So. Alpha feminine is going to attract a passive man and vice versa. Now, I'm not going to say you're passive all the time because like I have some guy clients that are like big masculine men. But when it comes to building and growing in a relationship, they're, they're passive in some areas and they're working through that. As soon as they realize they are, they realize that it's just a shift in consciousness, a shift in using the hardware differently and putting in different software, returning back. Because let's be honest, guys, we are in a civilization that is all about master and slave, okay? So if men were truly building and women were truly being led, that we would not be, we would not be okay with being told what we can make, what we can do, what we can have, because we would be in a whole unit, an operating unit that would be creating children and businesses and homes and legacies together okay but when the masculine doesn't want to build anything or doesn't feel like he can build anything or doesn't feel like he can make the living and provide and so he turns his volume down and gets you know bitter and destructive and the feminine still this innate desire to grow because guys we have to feel everything that's inside of us because it's in there you don't have to feel it because it's out here so we're feeling it. And so I have to grow, I have to grow, I have to grow. So we're growing, we flip into the masculine, we become the dominant role, but because we're not truly the blender, it's kind of the false conception of it. It doesn't last because we burn ourselves out. We're running energy. We're trying to become a blender. And so we build things and they break. We build things and we break. We build things and business partners take things. You know, we build things and we make wrong choices. We build things, we lose. So what we're doing is always starting over, always starting over, always starting over, always starting over. And this was my story. Okay. And when you try to communicate what I'm saying right now in your relationship, you're going to get stonewalled or gaslighted. So I do not recommend that you have a very conscious hardware conversation with your partner right now, because I'm always the enemy, right? Like 
what did just say this time? Okay. Do not just, this is for your awareness. This is, this will actually give you a, a huge amount of compassion for your partner. And this will also help you understand where you are bulldozing and alphaing and, and basically kind of like emasculating your partner. If he came in emasculated, I guarantee you you're emasculating him after the six month mark, because the three month mark, what we're trying to do is put you guys on a pedestal so that you'll know your worth and you'll start to see your potential. And so you'll build with us, but you're just like, Hey, this is a, this is the, this is the buffet I've been looking for. And then when we need you, right. Well, you already have it. Or the worst thing that you could say to a strong woman, when she finally goes vulnerable enough and asks you for help, which is very hard for her because it means I'm weak, right? It means I'm a burden. You could take, you could hurt me. You could use this against me. You know, I don't want to ask for help. So if a woman asks you for help, it is coming from a very deep, vulnerable place. And if you say to her, you are a strong woman and I know you can do it. You will be in that moment, the most unattractive man she has ever seen. And it will be very difficult for her after that to ever ask you for anything again or truly be turned on by you. Just being honest from experience. That isn't what we want to hear. We want to hear, you know what? You have been so, you've had to be so strong for so long. What can I help you with? Okay. How can I support you right now? It's not about fixing or building anything in that moment. It's about recognizing the, the, what she's asking for. Okay. And if a man goes to you with ladies and says, right, that I need you to be happy with what I have. Okay. You have to understand that when you say what you have, isn't good enough. They are very emasculated, defeated, and they aren't going to respect you the same because in their mind at this moment, because they're solid and more dense energy that are going to feel like you should appreciate this. And so the way that you get a man to be able to go, Hey, I think I could be a bigger blender here. Let's, let's have six of these is to appreciate what that he has and build up what he has and grow what he has and, and, Instead of making him feel obligated to go be more before he is inspired. He's got to go through his healing journey, just like you do. I know it takes a lot for you to ask for help. And if you are shamed and guilted, I would say that you need to pull out of that communication of that relationship and work on your self-concept, work on your own brain, work on your own body chemistry, and then start affirming different things and going back in. And he will shift and change at that point. But it's like this, you guys. I got two puppies, they're brother and sister, they're the same age. And when I got them, I was like, you know, what am I thinking? But I got them. And, and again, I needed to be the alpha of the house. And I started studying their personalities. And it was interesting because my female is the alpha. Okay. She is never satisfied. She can never sit still. She's always into something. She's always destroying something because there's nothing really for her to create. She's always leading him into trouble. She, but at the same time, she's nurturing him. She's loving him. She's cleaning her, his ears. She's playing with him, but she's also constantly in motion, right? And then there's my boy dog who wants to be filled up and turned on. He wants food in his belly and he wants belly rubs and he wants attention. And that's all he wants. And, but he gets inspired to do nonsense with her unless she's gone. So we literally just sent her to rehab. Because she is so intelligent that she needs a purpose. Like she needs to be an emotional support dog or she needs to be like um, one of those dog sniffer healers because the level of destruction usually is the level of genius within someone. And so if someone is destroying a lot, it's because they're not, their purpose isn't being utilized. And what I thought was funny was like our boy dog, he's just so simple. He's like, this is it. This is all I want. I'm a happy man. I'm a simple man, right? And then the feminine is like, never, ever ever satisfies, right? She wants to be, when she does want attention, it's not good enough for her to just lay down. She wants to be inside her skin, okay? So you can see the dynamic there of like our civilization and why relationships are fundamentally like perfect first three months because everyone is leading in their correct role. When a man is pursuing you in the beginning, hopefully 
he's being in his masculine and he probably feels amazing about himself. And then with that 90 day mark, the mask falls off and the inner, the inner self starts to show up and the passivity starts or the nagging starts or the, basically the, the, the wound around building and growing starts to show up. And then how you protect yourself from that is either very destructive and, and very abusive or very submissive and avoidant. And there's tons of psychology, but I recommend that you don't sit your years and study avoidant detachment disorder. Go back to the hardware and look and see, am I truly playing in that masculine role or am I playing in the feminine role or am I in that middle ground, which is like the emasculated man that is just trying to figure out how to get filled up and energized, but doesn't actually want to build anything with anybody because the last two wives took everything and destroyed everything. So they don't want to build with women again. They want to build their bodies. They want to build their lives. They want to build their legacies, but they just want your relationship to fill them up and turn them on. You want to pay attention to that because it's a wounded man. And if you want to, if you're dating women who want to control everything and want you to live in their house and do everything exactly how and don't touch this and you're dealing with you're, you're dealing with intentions that are not truly about connection and and so i would highly recommend that before you pay someone to tell you if this is your soulmate or spend more money on you know learning about avoided attachment that you just sit back and you look at the fundamental building blocks of who you are and what you've had to do to survive and and maybe look at has this created a personality identification out of it and has it also been leading with law of attraction which is magnetic right and so when a woman returns to her feminine energy she doesn't chase she attracts because she's literally contained by her god self and she's like this is what i have to offer i'm not all over the place i'm not promiscuous but this is what i am and if you want to be any part of this you're going to have to be the container of this and you're going to have to protect me in order for me to not go with the wind and go over here. But it's not coming from a, 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 a place of like promiscuity. It's coming from a place of support. A woman has so much energy that she literally wants to be supported and contained. So she is free to grow and build with you. Okay. And then fundamentally want to own, not to enslave but to protect like a father protecting a daughter, not like a slave owner. Like I want my daughter to feel so free that she can go do anything in the world. This is how your wife should feel. Right. But what happens in an emasculated man is he gets a hit off of her energy and he's like, I don't want anybody to have this ever again. And instead of building and growing with her, he gets manipulative. And anytime she gets too big, he, crashes her down to the knees and so she will feel unworthy and so she won't leave and I will tell you guys that that works for a little while if we have unworthy issues but if you keep doing that we're not, when we get we stop fighting you and we get quiet and we sound like HR and say good wishes to you know we're done and so you got it wrong guys instead of breaking a woman down so she won't leave you because you're secretly emasculated right? If you build her up, she will never leave you. If you tell her she's the most beautiful woman in the world and every single day, it'll never be enough, but she will only want that from you. And she doesn't actually even need you to have a container. She wants you to live in your potential of whatever container they have, building it into something that is unified. Okay. So this, this will just, this, this block right here is what we deal with first in quantum fitness, because Everything is harmonized and manifested through the masculine feminine connection. You're going to manifest a child through, right? The wood and the sea. And you're doing the same thing here. Everything that is coming into your world is either emasculated or alpha female. And so if it's alpha female, you're having to chase every dollar, ladies. And if you're emasculated, guys, you, you, you're, you can only build this much. All right. And you tend to manifest women that are never going to be satisfied with that because you're going to manifest very strong women because you're not in that role. And we need to just stop taking it personally. I mean, I've I have coached probably over a thousand people now in my career with this exact issue. 
because people who are in their true gender and are working as a team can get through anything together, anything. If you do not get through the growth position of your relationship, it isn't because of what you did to each other. It's because you were in the wrong role and you either one of you was living in your right potential because some of you are living in your big potential, but it's not your correct potential. Now, if you're gay or, or you know, lesbian or whatever, again, like I said, it's not the color or the, the choice of the blender. It's just the energy that is dominantly you. And I am dominantly feminine. And I will tell you everything I just shared is every single thing that I was desiring. We don't want to say it, but it's true. And if you go back to basics, fixing this part of your body will autocorrect your system, your metabolism, your organs, because again, it's magnetism, it's push pull. If it's in opposition with each other, you're going to be, you're going to have a destructive body. This is going to mess up your money line. And this absolutely messes up your relationship line. Because I would say that on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, there are more, there are more special people teachers out there. And it's like everybody is a special person expert. If you are in your feminine, you're never going to find your special person because you want, you want Prince Charming. But you are Prince Charming, ladies. So you have to fix that first. And if your your neediness is coming from the disconnection somewhere and someone's not being honest because they're either addicted to you turning them on or you're addicted to their potential, but it isn't real love because that obsessive neediness to be back together with someone who hurt you isn't real love guys. It's just you in the wrong gender chasing through your masculine. Okay. Or avoiding through, through your emasculation. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope this resonated. And if it did, please share my video, subscribe. We have groups, online coaching groups. We've got workshops coming out. And I have my new, my, my new boot camp coming out called Manifest Your Dream Body. Look and feel good naked. That also means vulnerable. And I will be dropping that very soon in our website. See you soon, guys.